Hi, welcome. Hi, welcome to Losing It with Shannon. So, in the last video I taped, which will probably go up next week or so, I mentioned make a list of the why you want to lose weight. And, you know, there can be many reasons why you might want to lose weight. So, this is to help you get motivation on those days when you're long. And the way that list is set up being short-term goals, long-term goals, scale victories, non-scale victories, that means every step of the journey, that means you have a, uh, it is a DVD, you have a uh, way to stay motivated. So reading it every day, once a week, once you've read it multiple times, many, many times, it's going to help strengthen that no muscle, and uh, then it's uh, also going to just help you celebrate once you get to those goals so so this is a video about why I am losing weight so plus my list of reasons which I, I shared a little bit of them in there but I'm going to show you two stories this is not the first time I've lost 80 pounds I've lost 80 pounds I before that started when I was like 1920 I was in a terrible relationship at the same time. I was trying to do the best I could do. I worked as a Y, and uh, I volunteered with 4-H. I love 4-H. It means so much to me in 4-H camp. And, you know, that's the only bad thing about having kids is I can't do 4-H. Because no one will watch them for a week. It used to be a family thing. So, multiple things happened that summer. Um... Uh, one, um, there's like two big bad hills at, uh, the 4-H camp I go to, and, um, now that I remember it, we were doing a, a, um, a scavenger hunt, and, uh, I'd always told myself I'd never let my weight affect me, and I never thought it was really affecting me. I went to Australia, I climbed a bridge, I repelled on a castle, all while fat and very, very, very shy, and not confident in myself at all. I mean, yeah, those th incidences, because I was so shy, was not super fun. I did not really make friends, and some of it was agony, but I still did it. I did those active things, and I always volunteered at 4-H. But those heels killed me, and they probably would still kill me now. So, <laughs> so I always, no matter what, I'll start really fast up that hill, hoping that I'll stay at least midway with my group of campers, and I always wind up being last. And I'm huffing and puffing, because this is probably the third or fourth time we went down and up and around the hill through the week. Plus all the daily walking. I'm dying. I don't remember if I was at the bottom of the hill that year. Because that's the awful one. So. Unfortunately, I had. There's always a group of JCs that will spend their time flirting. I feel like. Especially with the male campers in our team. And or, I mean, if not, they're just wanting to socialize. But this is not the time to socialize. Because yes, I'm going to be in the back. And probably at that time, I was not mature enough to go, hey, someone needs to be up front. I would now, because I'm, I'm that level. But I don't think at 1920, I would have. So, two boy JCs, two of my girl JCs are behind me just chatting up Storm. And... I'm huffing and puffing. I'm trying my best. And there's no one up front. Finally, the very much older than me, male AC, comes down the line. I know he probably wasn't he, trying to do this hatefully. But he said, like, hey, I'm like 40, 50. I have, uh, you know, diabetes and, you know, all this other pre uh, stuff. Why are you guys that are fit and fit or younger than me without these pre existing positions? Why are you down at the bottom of the group and no one's up front? 
<sighs> Whoa. I know he didn't mean hatefully. He was probably talking to the JCs for the most part. But it hurt. It hurt so much. I mean, I used to cry every time I told the story. I'm at least a 10 years later, not to the point where I cry. I was in tears. Uh, I wound up, my mom happened to be in the same uh, area at the very end of it. And I had been holding back tears the entire time. And I saw her and I just start crying at not a completely inappropriate time. Telling her what happened, my weight was affecting me. At the same time, sometime this summer, that summer, I got told bye bye a few times at roller coasters. I love roller coasters. And that hurt. That walk of shame is horrible. Because there's no way that it's nicer. So, I mean, at one point my mom took me on a special ride for adults only and that she had to pay for just to make me feel better. There might have been one other instant because I feel like there was three, but maybe it's like two rides I was turned away from. I moved. I am so sorry he keeps doing that. He needs to go. Um, this time it wasn't a concise events like that. Uh, this time it was when I was pregnant with Simon. I didn't gain. I was already heavier when I got pregnant with him because I had grief weight from losing my baby. And also I was working so I definitely did not have the time, energy, and didn't really know what to do. And I couldn't really grasp it. Plus, I was still nursing, and I was struggling with supply. And, like, at that point, by the time I got pregnant with Simon, I was pretty much just nursing at home. But it's just, after losing that baby, it was just so hard to even think about weight loss. Um, so, I got up to 315, 325. I don't know. I stopped looking at the scale because that was awful. I never wanted to be 300 pounds again, and here I was, 300 pounds. And I'm assuming I'm just going to get bigger. So, two months after I had, uh, till at the end of his pregnancy, he was super overdue. And I was really mad at my husband. This is the key because I like to blame my husband on this. And, um,. <laughs> Went to the doctor and my blood pressure was up. I don't remember if I had urine proteins in my urine, but they had to do a uh, non-stress test and they're like, "You're getting induced tonight. It's not. It's not safe for you and the baby." So again, yet again, I don't get that moment where I can go to my husband. It's time to go to the hospital. I mean, and I think my labor had just started. I think within 24 hours, I would have been in active labor. Because by the time I got to the, the hospital that night, they could finally start seeing the contractions I was feeling. And so, at my six-week appointment, I asked her, what's the chances of um, my blood pressure coming back like that? And there was pretty much, I think, I'm pretty sure she said like a 30% chance. And I'm like, okay. Well, if I lose weight, will that improve my chances? And she goes, well, of course, or something like that. I don't really remember. Everything's fuzzy from back then. So, a week after that, I was fighting with Jane. When I was bringing him in the house, I was distracted. Now, in the previous years before that, my husband had pulled a shrub and I tripped into this hole multiple, multiple times. And I kept telling him, can you fix that hole? Can you fix that hole? I'm distracted with Jane. And I fall in it and I hear a crack. Jane tumbles to the ground. I tumble to the ground. Simon's still in the car and I don't have air conditioning so it's hot. It's spring. I, I stand up because, you know, adrenaline, but I really can't stand up. And I'm hopping. This guy from across the street comes and getting Jane almost runs in the road. 
it doesn't feel like my foot is connected to my foot, my ankle, my foot and my leg don't feel like they're in the same space anymore. It doesn't feel solid like an ankle should feel. And so eventually I get my mother-in-law to come pick us up. It's hard to get to her car. It's hard to get to a wheelchair. It's hard because I can't stand up. I get crutches that night and that's impossible. I don't think I can still use crutches because that just that's brain work I can't understand. So, I was so weak, strength-wise. I could not stand up with one leg. Could not use the crutches. I'd use a knee scooter. And, like, I couldn't even get up from chairs. I'd have to, like, get a folding chair. Scoot my butt on it. Then turn around using the back of it. Then swivel onto my knee scooter. The times I had to use my crutches, it was awful and horrible, and I was not balanced, and I hopped. I still don't think I could use them. When I got out of the air cast, my feet were on fire. I mean, how much muscles do you use to walk and stand? It's alarming. And so much atrophy happened in that leg alone that I am still recovering from it, still. That's why one move in bar that uh, one of my favorite teachers does a lot is so, so, so hard for me. Because I realize we start on the leg. I'm standing on my broken ankle leg. And it is so hard for me, especially trying to keep that good form and keep it on my shoulders. It's hard because bouncing on that leg is, it feels like impossible. Like I, I cannot really do a balance hold with that move. Because the muscles is not, muscles are not there. Um, there's even difference in my measurements on that leg. Like about inch to half inch difference. My husband realized then I was so weak I couldn't use crutches that our weights were killing us. Um, and it was horrible. By the way, having a broken leg or broken ankle sucks. Hardcore. And just feel like a sweat sweat hot mess of breast milk and staleness it's just gross because <sighs> I was nursing I mean that's the only good thing that I was nursing but at the same time he lived on me for four months that's why he is the ridiculousness that he is because he lived on me he, there was no opportunity to go here's a bottle of pumps here's a baby bye so <sighs> that's why he is the way he is he's cute though feet so that those two things are my biggest motivator I want to get stronger um I need to regain the strength in my legs so maybe I do need to die in seat boosters more than the, the 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 bar videos um just but then there's other things like pregnancy has ruined my um esophagus so heartburn oh my goodness my heartburn so bad and now i can pretty much take medicine like just a few times a week and be cool. maybe occasional zantac at night depending on my meals uh i mean of course i want to get smaller wear the clothes i wore 10 years ago um but unfortunately breastfeeding boobs are real so some of them don't feel like they used to because of that and i've always had large boobs so it's like whoa then, uh, I, uh, just being able to play with my kids better and easier. Uh, the other day, I had to climb up a structure that was only for small children. Because Jane was stuck at the top. And I could do it. And I didn't feel like I could break it. Oh, and, uh, just, just more quality time with my kids, I guess. Um... I slept in his toddler bed, the toddler bed, to get him to sleep in it, and I haven't broken it yet. Like, I could. I probably will. I probably shouldn't be on it, but at 300 pounds, I would have. Um, I'm teaching them healthier choices and hopefully setting them up to not have to be obese all their life like I have been. And I keep trying to uh, mind my words, especially last month or two 
about why I exercise is because I realize, I mean, it's so hard because I've always been like one of those people that goes, well, I am fat because that is the fact. I am fat. I am obese. That is why I am. I still am. So don't say anything about it unless I've lost 10 pounds before posting this video. 10 pounds for me to get to overweight. This video is going to be a lot longer, it seems, than my normal videos. So, 10 pounds. That's Bubba. That's Bubba. So, but uh, saying uh, I'm trying to eat healthier because I'm fat, that's not... I don't want them to consider healthy food a way to suffer, if that makes any sense. So I've been trying to say I work out to get stronger because I do. Um, not just lose weight, to get stronger. And I've gotten so much stronger. I, I wow, stronger. Three percent muscle gain in the last few months alone. Then you know I've been trying to tell them that food is fuel and it's going to help you get big and strong and, and it's not in the way as big as in fat. No big like daddy, like tall, like big. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's really clicked in with my three year old. He says, I eat this to get big like daddy. I'm going to lift this weight to get strong. So that stuff is working. Um, I think those are like the main things that are my goals. I mean, I would love to get in the overweight range, which would be a scale goal. Um, because I'm still 10 pounds away as of this video. Um, I would love to be normal weight, but I don't know if my goal is even in normal weight. I, my goal is to get to 185, 175, then see how I feel from there, and then keep going depending on if I feel like what my body's like. I would love it to where I have a natural waistline if I if my uh, belly didn't just hang over it. So you never really see my belly button. It's just hidden underneath the, that B, the B, the N of the B. But I've hit a lot of my goals on why I lose weight. But I keep trying to lose weight, obviously, because I'm not at the goal weight I have had. And also, every pound I can lose, hopefully, will give me a better pregnancy. I can't imagine a pregnancy starting at 199. That seems like insanity. Like, will I, will, will, will it be easier? And that's the hope. And hopefully... I'll, and I'm go my goal is to obviously keep exercising, to hopefully you know trim down my inches while being pregnant, to keep strong, and hopefully be able to get this baby out on its own. Maybe I wasn't active enough, and that's why he stayed in, was comfortable, and everything. But you know, fourth pregnancy, thir third baby, I'm really hoping hard. That baby will just want to slide on out. But you've got to pick your motivation. I mean, oh, I've also had the motivation of trying to ride roller coasters. Still haven't had a chance to go to an amusement park this year. I'm asking for it for my birthday, though. Because, you know, Fright Nights at Kings Island. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, and then some other goals I have is, like, get smaller, to use my LED hoop that's 40 inch. 40 inches easier to just be able to use my 42 inch when I was at my biggest was a goal. I mean, and that's a fitness goal, sort of, kind of, I guess. Uh, and uh, all sorts of little things like um, I, there's no driver weight on driver's license in Kentucky, so that's not really a thing. But hey, as far as I know, I am a lower weight than I was any time during high school. And I actually look better now than I ever did in high school. So, there's that. Oh, and I've done like, I've been able to do fitness things I would have never done a while back. Like uh, aerial sculpt at uh, the bar studio I go to. I would have never done that because I've been afraid that, you know, I'm going to break the ceiling. I mean, I'm still kind of afraid at times. But... But in in the trampoline trampoline class, like I remember taking it around two fifty, and I was like, I hope this can hold me. 
but even be able to do some of those moves, like I'll do a little higher, is amazing. So, and like walking with the kids, it's hard because I'm pushing two of them all sometimes. But it's gotten so much easier in the uh, last few months. That's so encouraging. And I'm hitting some of those goals. And it's great. Uh, but, you know, you got to find your motivation. And, you know, having a healthier future pregnancy, having a baby is very motivating for me. And also, my doctor's offices do notice when I lose all the weight because I'm a stay at home mom and no one knows this. So. There's that. So there's two stories of why I'm losing weight. And you have some tips on how to set your long-term, short-term goals um, uh, regarding your weight loss to keep you motivated for the short-term and the long-term. Uh, have a great one and good luck on your fitness and wellness journey. You can do this. Oh, and you know, you may get some bruises on your rear like this one. But he keeps trying, so, you know. Ah! There's that. He just keeps trying, and he almost kills himself all the time doing it. So, if he can do it, you can do it, too. Just don't give up. Bye.